I'm Javon, a tattletale, a storyteller. Atlanta is home to the oldest black orphanage in the nation. Meet Carrie Steele Pitts, as told by Lador's Bias Davis. Hello, I'm Carrie Steele Logan, and I'm inviting you in today to share my story. I was born here in Georgia in 1829. I was born into slavery, and later, I was an orphan. There was no birth certificate, no parent information. But though the restrictions of slavery, somehow I learned to read and write. After slavery, I got a job at the Central Railroad, reportedly making $100 a month. And after the Civil War, I worked as a maid union station here in Atlanta and what did I see? Outside, little children, not much more than babies really, playing alone in the rail yard, tattered and torn, homeless and hungry. I would put them in an empty rail car while I worked. Then I would share my lunch with them and started taking them home at night. My husband, Josiah Logan fortunately shared my passion and we wanted to give the children a home. We did want them to be orphans as I had been, but we had a small home. What were we going to do? Well, we sold our home so we would have money to buy a larger place. And yes, I was one of the first black landowners in Atlanta. So we sold our home and I sold my story, my autobiography, not to the printing press, but in the streets. But unfortunately, I hear those documents were lost after my death. My husband and I were compassionate and we were resourceful. People saw the need and they came and gave money so we could house the children. And in 1888, I chartered the first orphanage for African-American children in the state of Georgia, in the Pittsburgh community. You know that Roy Street, Windsor, McDaniel area? We had two rooms and five children. We were able to expand and we went to a three-story brick building that housed 50 children. What was my motive? My mission. It was to help children thrive. Somewhere in my career, I had been a volunteer probation officer. So I knew what youth and crime looked like. And we wanted to put measures in place that these children would not fall into a life of crime. We had a charter at the Cary Steel Orphanage. Children had to remember several things, but five things we really wanted them to remember. How to care for themselves, to care for others, to have a strong work ethic, to get the best education possible, and to live out a strong faith. I want to tell you about somebody who came into the orphanage after my death, but played a pivotal role in the Cary Steel Orphanage. Her name was Clara Pitts, and she was the principal of the first school for African-American children in Decatur. So she knew education. She knew about taking care and nurturing and educating children. She came in and expanded the operation. She was able to get additional funding and moved the orphanage to a new facility, a larger facility because we were growing and she directed the orphanage until her own death in 1950 and in the 1940s. In recognition of her dedication and commitment to improving the lives of children, the Cary Steel home was renamed the Cary Steel Pitts Home. And another person of interest is Miss Olivet Allison. Miss Olivet was a child in the orphanage but she became one of the directors. 
And the interesting thing about her, she collected little elephant figurines. She adored them. If you know anything about the culture of the elephants, the moms bring in the orphans, the little orphan calves, and they love them and they take care of them and they make sure that they have a home and a parent. So what and where is the Kerry Steel Pits home today? It's still flourishing on Felwyn Road. It has a wonderful after school program, summer camp that has a STEM initiative and a 100% graduation rate. Why? Because we put children in an atmosphere where they can thrive. Now, Ms. Pitts was recognized for her dedication to children. In 1888, I was awarded the Georgia Woman of Achievement Award for my commitment and dedication to neglected, abused, and abandoned children. Now, Ms. Pitts is buried in the beautiful historic Southview. Ms. Olivet is buried along with my husband and I. There was a plaque outside that said orphanage. It is said that the children took the plaque and removed it. They said, this is not an orphanage because this is our home. Speaking of children, I have to share with you this story. Now, whoever the director was, they was always looking for means to get more funding to take care of the children and to keep the center in good repair. But as you know, sometimes circumstances just conspire against us. One spring, there was an awful spring thunderstorm. It hit the building in the middle of the night and tore a large hole in the tin roof. Now children on this side of the building woke up absolutely drenched and frightened. But we were so glad that the children were not seriously hurt. But not all children appreciated the care and concern that we provided at the home. There were two rascals, Julius and Arthur, homeless, roaming the streets during the day, sleeping on the homes at night and stealing food so they could eat. But once inside our facility, well, we offered a safe haven and warm, I mean, wholesome food and a warm environment. Those rascals broke into the matron's truck and stole all her money. Uh! Now that's the height of ingratitude. But you know, children like Julius and Arthur made us just renew our commitment to meeting the need of every child. So on my husband's headstone, it says Josiah Logan, father of orphans. And on mine, it says, Carrie Steele Logan, mother of orphan, she has done what she can. I am humbled to have been a part of their lives. And we want them to always remember, take care of yourself. Care of others. Have a strong work ethic. Get the best education possible and have a strong life of faith. I'm Carrie Steele Logan. I am so glad that you came by to share my story. And I bid you good day. Carrie Steele Pitts was committed to the well-being of all children. I'm Javon and this is Profiles in Color.